Welcome to Integral Podcast once again. Today, I'm speaking to a person that I've really been looking to talk to about integral theory and integration and perspectives quite quite a bit, along with a bunch of other people in my network. So, Keith, without further ado, please tell us, who are you? That's a quite difficult question in a way. Uh, I mean, I don't know that people would be interested in all the various details of my, my life. Uh, I said most relevantly, I thought to say, well, I'm a person who, from a very early age, was determined to work out what was really going on with this life. I had to work through my fundamentalist upbringing, philosophy training, and much more to come to a truly considered view. Mm -hmm. Whatever... Whatever ever else I've been doing in life, this is something I could never let go of. I can remember at an early age sitting and going, what is this? What's going on, really? Mm. I got some stories about it, and I'm not so that I like them very much. <laughs> uh, although I subscribe initially, as you do as a child, but uh, uh, yes. So um, I'm sure a lot of people can relate uh, to this in one way or another. Uh, so I went for a long and complicated uh, history, really just, this is the constant thread. Um, I've not been a person who's been satisfied with had answers or, or things that didn't make sense to me. And just slowly, slowly, slowly worked my way through on the whole. So that, that, that's who I am in, the, in, in one important way. Awesome. So it's kind of like a constant quest on unwinding a story and getting to truth, reality, more fact and, and, and direct experiencing, I suppose. Yeah. Um, one of the, my favorite uh, bits from the Bible is says that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, <laughs> Pilate famously says to, to Christ, he said, what is truth? Uh, people have noted that he didn't actually get a direct response at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, hardly surprisingly. But uh, yeah, um, truth, I think, has been a real, what is really true uh, is, has been a, a constant theme. And uh, it, it's... I think there's a lot of people now realizing it's not actually the simplest thing to, uh, to do. So yeah. it's not as simple as uh, mm. I'll just listen to the scientists or just listen to someone else. Or, it's not that simple at all. Yeah. To put it in Facebook terms, it's complicated <laughs> in some sense, yet it's so simple. <laughs> And it's just both of those things, uh, in fact, uh, there's a fundamental simplicity to it, but you can't get there necessarily without happening through a lot of complexity. So what brought you into the integral sphere of life, so to speak? How did you come across integral theory and all that stuff? Yeah, well... Um, what happened was that I was, happened to be uh, at the uh, University of Canberra one day and I went into the bookshop, as is my want, and there, sitting up proud and tall, and I've never seen this before or since, was a, a, a big, uh, beautiful copy of Ken Wilber's Sex, Ecology, Spirituality. <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know why they were selling that in there, I, uh, why they were putting it up so prominently, but, but there it was. And it was almost as if the book was saying, um, hello, I'm here, you need me, this is, my, this is your book. Mm. And uh, yes, it called to me very strongly. And uh, so I bought that book and uh, devoured it. Mm -hmm. And I had you know, spent many years studying philosophy and trying to put together a PhD, which I never managed to, to complete. But uh, I read this book and I said, that's what I was trying to talk about. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. What PhD? PhD in philosophy. Yes, indeed. Mm. Mm. Uh, but basically, I got steered in all the wrong directions and uh, didn't really have the uh, supervision and mentorship really that I needed for the, for the no. process. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a long story. So, so what what is um, what is so interesting about integral theory to you? Why, why do you support it if you do? Yeah, well, I do. Uh, I wrote down something which. Uh, just might read about that. Uh, because it really does connect all areas of human scholarship and practice in a highly illuminating way, at least in my opinion. Seldom, if ever, has the true unity and diversity of experience reality been better expressed. There are other people who have done similar things, but uh, somehow uh, the just the, the, the way that uh, I mean, there are real issues with things like the four quadrant model, but it does show something that makes intuitive sense and <laughs> and is uh, it can be worked with and, mm -hmm. and has been worked with and, uh, and worked with uh, fruitfully. And you read really good integral uh, theory, for instance, and you know there's a number of number of different people that I saw it. And I so said, now I really, I, I didn't actually ever think of coming up at it from that direction or the other direction and how they actually, these things actually connect. And, um, you know, the, the academia notoriously just kind of get people to go and do their little thing and they don't, often don't bother to really connect it very much to anything else when everything, the world isn't like that the world everything is connected to everything else we know that yeah it's, yep. it's a it's a cliche <laughs> but uh actually uh conceptualizing those connections in a, in a fruitful way is something that's not often done and yeah i mean it, 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 there's, there's integral theory and there's integral theory but you know <laughs> and, and there are lots of disputes and lots of <laughs> but uh the, the the best stuff that I've read uh, really uh, you come away and sort of think I really understand this much better than I did before. Yeah, yeah. There there is an element of of it gives you clarification on things that otherwise just sitting on your own uh, you find either difficult to to get through or you can't really see properly. And integral theory at least gives you some sort of pointers towards what else to look at and, and how to uh, research it as opposed to just kind of sit in some sort of meta stuckness, so to speak. Um, yes. And the, the evolutionary uh, uh, core of the whole thing is important. Yeah. Mm. We, uh, the put taking evolutionary theory beyond sort of the, the standard neo Darwinian model, mm. uh, of course, is uh, highly controversial and sort of sends some people into uh, states kissing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, this is, you know, I mean, something going up well, which you know, notably, of course, was done by Hegel and other people. Uh, and there's numerous you know, other people who have done something similar, but mostly in, in, in the modern era. And actually under, understanding psychology and uh, you know, worldviews and in a historical perspective is enormously illuminating once you understand, you understand that you know, people will make the mistake of thinking the Romans were just like us wearing togas. Where that's just not true. <laughs> I had a very different understanding and experience of the world, and um, not one that we can easily re re recreate. And we can make, try the imagination, but uh, we're kidding ourselves if we can think that we really understand what, was, what it meant to be a Roman. Just one example, and at least the whole issue of moral development takes on a whole new, different perspective once you. Uh, understand you know, what was going on. Yeah, little uh, 
example that I often cite is that people often think about medieval knights as these sort of noble creatures who went uh, around sort of defending the, the poor and damsels in distress and all of this sort of thing. They've got it completely backwards. Mm. That's not what knights were about. <laughs> <laughs> the knightly code was in invented to, to tr do something about the fact that knights were notorious plunderers, rapists and pillarers. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> and this is an, and actually Charlemagne and his uh, ecclesiastical advisors were actually, they had this program of improvement, which included basically pulling these, basically these thugs uh, up and um, forcing them to behave better. <laughs> that, yeah. that, was what, that was what the knightly code was about. And uh, it gives you a totally different, you know, you have this uh, you know, romantic picture of knighthood, which is com almost completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, integral theory actually, so, I mean, it's just a little example that, 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 that really, can, um, uh, so I never really understood that properly before. Uh, then I saw it from the fact that, uh, in, in terms of uh, what we call spiral dynamics, which you know has been in, in, implemented in, uh, incorporated uh, controversially into integral theory by Wilbur, mm -hmm. the the knights are, are, are red, the red mean, and uh, mm -hmm. they they are, they're, 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 it's all about power and having power over people. And only, you know, basically for your own benefit. And if they benefit at all, it's it's a lucky, lucky thing for them. But generally, uh, the king is at the top, the barons the next, the knights are below them, and everyone else basically gets to do their bidding. Oh, yeah, it's get, get in line of the power and uh, really follow follow the ruler, not not necessarily the leader. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, and it's not about uh, law or, or rules. It's, it's about who, who has, you know, who's in control. And, uh, exactly. of course, we still, we still see that in many places in the modern world. And actually, in, integral theory and, you know, of course, spiral dynamics pointed it out, you know, somewhat independently, but uh, it, all, it all fits, it all makes sense. When when yeah. you look at somebody like Donald Trump, you, what do you think? I think the red moon. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm. Straightforward. So, uh, <laughs> uh, in fact, yeah, so. you 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 listen to the like uh, someone like Ice T, the rapper who invented gangster rap. Uh, he's he just calls Donald Trump gangster. <laughs> you know, he does things the way gangsters do. You know, it's either my way or the highway. That's it. So, yeah, yeah, and it's crystal clear. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's uh, uh, even Noam Chomsky saying, you know, the gangster in the White House. <laughs> and uh, yeah, although although Donald Trump also has the 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 other meme going strong for him, which is even in the color of his hair, which is orange. So it's kind of like red and orange, and then he kind of rewrites the rules to suit his red and orange memes, kind of in that order. Yes, it's it's Donald first, and then sort of. Uh, well, after all, it's it's business, isn't it? But, uh, exactly. In in in, in, the, in the most uh, exploitative yeah. fashion. And and it's literally a pyramid scheme as well because you know, he's well known for MLMs in the past and all the kind of Trump uh, brands, right? So as long as you're playing the Trump game, uh, well, you'll be accepted into it. You, you may not prosper. In fact, you most likely won't prosper, but you'll be in the Trump clan. <laughs> That's right. You have a sense of belonging. Uh, yeah, what, whatever it yeah. means uh, for you, he doesn't care. <laughs> no, and uh, well, yeah, yes, 
Beau betide you at the point when you suddenly realize that he doesn't care and you've just spent you know, thousands of dollars, millions of dollars possibly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that. That's just how it is. Uh, so, what, mm-hmm. what are what are in how how do you think of someone who is um, at this at an integral stage of of being, thinking, doing? What what is a in in your view um, a good integral person? Yeah. Well, uh, I thought of, thought about that. Uh, well. To me, uh, a typical integral person would have an insatiable curiosity about the lived world of humanity and other creatures, an appropriate intellectual humility that can incorporate multiple lived perspectives into their understanding without doing violence to any, and the courage to stand against entrenched single perspective dogmatism. Uh, mm-hmm. That one of the biggest problems in our world is dogmatisms that are not even seen as dogmatisms but uh, mm. actually are uh, they, they don't check out uh, but uh, we're taught them uh, we're let they're just assumed on lots in lots of uh, institutional contexts uh, it costs you to, to to buck them often uh, yeah, you, you see that in in medicine, uh, in in the law, uh, in many areas of life, really. Uh, that uh, so many assumptions in science as well. Uh, I'm quite fond of the work of Rupert Sheldrake and his uh, mm. Mm. science delusion, which of course sends uh, Richard Dawkins apoplectic. Uh, he thinks about it. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, Rupert's basically right. Uh, we've made various assumptions, which actually, if you look at them, uh, you know, what's the evidence? It's all, you know, like really not there or, or uh, very dubious. Uh, yeah. It was actually last night I it came on my YouTube, this conversation between uh, Dawkins and one of the comedians here. Uh, and, and the comedian said, uh, I'm against dogma of any kind and things that are not supposed to be debated. And... Uh, <laughs> And I was thinking, well, one of the things that's not supposed to be debated in your world there is that science is wrong in a number of places and that we might, we just can't know certain things and that, you know, Dawkins isn't absolutely right (laughs) about every single thing. And, you know, but who's going to prod those, push those buttons? (laughs) Did, uh, did, did he nod and sort of, yes, we're like a whole self against dogmas and sort of all, all kinds. Yeah. So um, how, how do you use integral theory and or maps in your work? Yeah, well, actually, uh, my paid work uh, is, is in IT, actually. So um, uh, the direct application is is not obvious, but I mean it, it does apply. I mean, and I think if you have an integral understanding, it doesn't matter what you're doing, that you can actually apply that understanding. Uh, I mean, one one way I do it in uh, IT is that I, as I've proclaimed loudly, many people, I am a absolute ferocious uh, AI skeptic. I, you know. The Matrix, you know, of the uh, first of all, the Matrix can't happen for various reasons, <laughs> and um, the, uh, the, uh, the singularity where the machines allegedly, you know, get smart and um, and uh, take over or do whatever they're going to do, uh, yeah. also not going to happen, can't happen. Uh, people who think it can happen don't understand the nature of, of, of mind. Mm. Uh, insofar as we do, we, I mean, we understand the nature of mind because we are it. 
Yeah. We also don't understand it because uh, <laughs> we, we, we don't necessarily have a lot of uh, distance. You can say. We don't kind of look back and say, you know, when you actually you know, get into it, it's the most mysterious thing. And, um, but also not because it's just this. It's not, it's not something hidden. It's totally clear, open and transparent that not if you try to understand it in a different way, you totally fail. So, you know, the third person mm. uh, understanding uh, the whole thing. So if you think the perception is about, I don't know, having a little you know, theatre in your head somewhere where, where, where you're sort of playing a kind of movie, it doesn't work like that. We know it doesn't work like that. No such movie theatre can be found. <laughs> and if it did work like that, uh, how would anybody ever know anything? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, so that's uh, to anticipate one of your questions. This is you know one of the, the things that philosophy is good for uh, knowing uh, what uh, what's just not worth pursuing. Uh, AI is good for certain things, but if it's it's not good for, that, we're, we're not going to create artificial people that way. It's not going to happen. And uh, I don't care if we have 10,000 years, that is not going to happen. <laughs> Cyborgs can happen, but not pure AI. So, um, which yeah, which yeah. area of IT are you in? Well, I've been primarily databases. Uh, at the moment, I'm uh, moving heavily into Salesforce, which is uh, possibly heard of. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm also I'm also a computer science background and also systems uh, designer UX designer. Um, so so I've been working on lots of different both government banking systems now like bits of blockchain and all sorts of things. So um, for me actually I find integral theory very very useful uh, for designing uh, IT systems because I use it as a, almost like a, a test. Uh, framework to go does this system make sense from for example from for me for i internally does it make sense for we have we got the it and its bits in place and there's like even uh, testing ways to for example you can use the spiral dynamics to check whether something is experientially whole so is the system intuitive to use? Has it got some mm. sort of magical thing to it? Because famously Steve Jobs pitched up iPhone as a magic you know, device. Um, does it give me power? Does it empower me to do something I can't? Does it follow a set of certain you know, easy to understand rules? Uh, is it rational? Does it logically make sense for me? Does it make mm. me feel good? You know. And mm. does it all integrate well together so that when I'm using the device or the system, uh, it's actually working along with my life in a way that holistically makes sense to me to reuse it and use it again and so on. So that would be kind of like use of spiral dynamics in IT and systems design to go. If we're missing in any one of those stages or, or oh. it doesn't sort of check out, then then we're making a product or a system that's kind of not holistic um yeah yeah actually uh i mean now you put it that way uh, i i think that uh, i do use it in those ways and uh, i mean mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's you get to the point i think where we're actually thinking in a holistic integral way is your default position so you will not automatically want to sort of incorporate uh, so many times people will just kind of say, oh, well, um, you know, I, I've got a, a brief and I, I do the bits and, and that's just my job. Someone else's job, you know, you've got somebody else that does the user interface, someone else does the thing. We don't, we don't actually put it all together. 
because uh, we think that if we just basically, you know, connect the cables and the bits and the, the wall, it'll all be fine. And of course, that's not how it works. It's got, it's got to, it's got to synergize. It's got to integrate and uh, to do its job as a whole. If it doesn't do that, then we're wasting our time. People won't use it. Or they'll find it too frustrating. And um, yeah, I, I think that uh, some of the Salesforce people have a, a sort of intuitive understanding of a lot of these things because they actually do generally do it right. So it's yeah, that's uh, interesting. But yeah, I, I only once had a, a, an experience of, of Salesforce where they're trying to pitch uh, to us when I was working with Amex Innovation Labs, uh, and they were pitching to us that you know Salesforce can do everything and anything we wanted to do. Uh, and, and then, you know, they presented to us the interfaces on some of the back end, and it was like, oh God, this is just like, uh. I'm not sure how they've gone on uh, since then. I know they, they um, acquired the actual whole design agency at one point to redesign the entire thing, and this was a number of years ago. Uh, so, so I'm expecting it to be much uh, easier to use overall and more intuitive and even there, I say, magic. yeah, I, they've done a great job on that. It's called lightning experience. In the mm. Yeah. Uh, we digress somewhat, but never mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's actually good, um, you know, leads into the next question of how, uh, you know, what are some of the wise uh, ways to develop and promote integral understanding and, and practices uh, because you know this would be like an example of a practice of using integral theory for some sort of objects and systems, but inevitably objects and systems are used by people. So you know what what are the wise ways to develop and promote integral understanding and practices? Yeah, uh, it's written down here. The good question is that I know quite a few less wise ways. Um, <laughs> That's why that's why I phrased it as wise way, not less wise. Because <laughs> those seem to be all over the place. <laughs> We've got loads yeah. of those ones. <laughs> yeah, this this made me think and uh, uh it was um I mean the, the the obvious foundational thing is that you have to commit yourself to uh integral development in practice. And that really means that your whole life is sort of up for grabs in that sense. You've got to actually pay attention to everything. Uh, and uh, there's no small thing because uh, we all know people who are really brilliant in one area, but their whole life is, is a disaster in mm. some other area. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, you, you really do have to... Uh, have to do that. I mean, if you don't, you're just setting yourself up for uh, for disaster, and you're not going to actually um, you're not going to be implementing it in wise ways in any in any large sense. Um, we all have our issues, but um, so I mean that that's just a kind of foundational point, I suppose. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, if you talk, talk, talk about promotion in a sort of like, almost like a marketing sense, <laughs> not done a great job so far on the whole. Mm. Um, uh, part of the trouble seems to be that it's too easy for people to just relate to it as a nice set of theoretical ideas and frameworks that they can uh, debate endlessly online about. Uh, it just seems to be a sport that young men like to, to engage in, whereas no. most of the women have got more sense. But um, <laughs> the the uh, if none of that stuff uh, matters a fig if, if it doesn't actually produce uh, value, just basically greater wholeness and uh, connection and. Um, we, have, you know, we have all these wicked problems. We have you know, climate change. We have obviously we have this pandemic and just the whole issue of um, 
you know, how, how is human reality so compromised by these, this, this thing, this thing. And uh, we've got uh, an absolute crop of, you know, tyrannical governments popping up all over the place, you know, democracy and retreat and so forth. So um, I don't claim to have, you know, the, all the answers about this. So uh, what I, I am certain of is that um, one shouldn't assume that your integral development and commitment is irrelevant to, to all those things. And, and it's one, in the first place, it gives you a, a, a way of, it illuminates problems. Illuminating the problem isn't enough, but, but that's, a, that's something you really need to do. You need to see where you are before you can actually do something about it. And then you need to do something. Um, in, you know, as, as to you know, particular, uh, particular uh, situations, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, you can discuss those. Uh, but uh, the thing is that there is a wholeness that's actually already there. It's, it just needs to be mm. um, psychoactivated. Yes, most definitely psychoactivated. Also, uh, physioactivated as well. In yeah. Certain yeah. Ways. yeah. Yeah. As I suppose, like in my in my sort of experience psychoactivation has to happen before the physical or somatic activation. Although sometimes people do find themselves doing the right thing without knowing why they're doing it. Uh, I, I think suppose, that happens frequently actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I suppose maybe we call those the lucky ones. <laughs> Yeah, just, oh, well, you know, you got in the flow, you don't know how you got there, but uh, things are just kind of, you know, sweet. And then something happens and they're not so sweet anymore. Mm, yeah, exactly. Suddenly, like, um, reality hits you on the head uh, with a sledgehammer and uh, you have to sort of, like, re um, uh, uh, reanalyze everything you thought was right before. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I, I mean, it's not necessarily the case that what you, what you were doing before was wrong. It's just that uh, you must have missed something. Uh, mm. Something was, some, oh, something needed to happen for some reason that you don't understand. Um, it's, you know, you just got to work with what you got and to do it in the most aware way. I think it's a constant refrain that, you know, so why is this happening to me? Well, you know, you might get some insight that uh, you um, need to like pull the threads or follow the dots or whatever the the, uh, the metaphor is, and keep going and um, just open your awareness as you can. I, I think so. I think that's. Uh, what you need to do in order sometimes that's all you can do yeah yeah just keep exploring until you find something <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so so one of the things that really got um, my attention uh, ab about you is when you posted uh, a little bit of an argument analysis or kind of what I would even call statement analysis uh, of David Long's post an integral uh, group on, on Facebook, uh, Integral Global, and you highlighted the angles of argument that he was making, because he's always kind of picking on everyone as like, oh, that's an argument from this kind, that's an argument from authority, you're appealing to authority and all these kind of things. And mm -hmm. then you, res you, you took a, an entire highlight of his long sort of essay response, and then highlighted exactly the, the spiral dynamics uh, kind of uh, colors of his arguments and sort of highlighting where he was. Oh, no, 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 it's from. kind of slightly backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, what that, 
what that was was actually the first chapter of my uh, my book in which is in uh, uh, a long gestation I, I must admit but uh, so my book is called um, beyond materialism mm -hmm. and the first chapter is just entitled what is materialism anyway and what David actually did was color code various sections of my first chapter and mm -hmm. allege various things about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I wasn't going to take that lying down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, and after all, this is just the setup chapter. This is this. Is, you know, there's not even yeah. a lot of substantive argument in this chapter. Yeah. I'm just saying this is what we're talking about. There is a little bit, but but not a lot and um he was so um, that particular uh, uh um, performance where he actually sort of had had a uh, so you know different what the different colors that he was highlighting meant um was well you know i'll, I'll try to be charitable about it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, let's just say it wasn't difficult to, to rebut. Um, and <laughs> what s stood out for me was that it was just basically something was jumping out of the page at him and it meant for him something like dogmatism, denying science or mm -hmm. whatever it was. You know, basically it hurt him. him. It hurt him. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's, he's standing against what he really thought it was. But, uh, you know, even my, what I thought were completely innocuous uh, introductory remarks saying, you know, why this, how I got into be interesting, interested in this particular topic and why it stayed with me all these years. And, uh, and um, that was an argument from authority. Uh, and as, as I said, well, as much as to say, well, I've studied this topic and you haven't, so, um, you know, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> and uh, so, so it, it was kind of like sort of empty rhetoric, uh, essentially, and uh, um, remarkably easy to, uh, to rebut, as other people. And uh, the curious thing is that David doesn't seem to realise that, that, I mean, what my response I regard as devastating. I and mean, he just basically had no case, but um, he doesn't see it that way. But um, um, yeah, it's so. So, so what I what I'm really kind of quite interested is because to me that that was a very interesting exercise actually on on both of your parts, actually highlighting how humans speak really. And what yeah. seems to be quite a normal thing, like we're all subject to biases and holding on to some perspectives a little bit stronger than others. And mm. you know, if we pick a topic to write about, then we, we ought to stick to that topic as opposed to re-describe the entire integral theory again. Uh, you know, it's like sometimes there is a case for going deeper in one you know, vertical slice, in the very thin vertical slice. Um, mm. Uh, which requires a different kind of exploration of the world and universe uh, compared to the kind of broad and perhaps shallower, but it's kind of narrower and deeper. So is there a particular kind of technique for doing that sort of analysis? Because to me, that's, that's quite a powerful thing uh, to, to do even more as like a, even on oneself, let alone, you know, on other people. Yeah, well, when you sort of you know, ask me about sort of the analytic uh, process, and I had to, yeah, I had to think about it. And I've just written something here. I said this is um, this is a rather difficult question to answer, as there is a large element of long training and experience required, mm. in my mm. experience, to be really good at this. Yeah, as best I can say, it, it's a combination of high linguistic understanding advanced pattern recognition and previous experiences of similar material. And I said, that said, the example you cite was not difficult to analyze. Uh, yeah. So, cause there, there is something known as uh, statement analysis, 
uh, which like CIA interrogators use to detect what the person's actually talking about uh, by analyzing the words that they're using, kind of sort of like reading between the lines, but really understanding. So for example, the word that is a distancing yeah. word compared to this. So like famously Bill Clinton said, I did not have sexual relations with that girl. So he's like distancing himself from Monica Lewinsky. Um, mm. Whereas uh, this is more like it's here, it's with me, it's present and so on. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, so, so even just kind of that little trivial example uh, shows that, that one word p points, it's like a pointer to certain mind framing and so on. Uh, so so mm. I, I, I'd personally love to, you know, if you ever offer some sort of training on this, I'd, I'd love to do that course, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how that would go. <laughs> I mean, uh, philosophy training is a, is a, is a curious thing. Uh, I mean, it varies a lot, I guess. But um, the classic training that I got at the University of Sydney um, was very much uh, uh, focused on uh, analysing you know, arguments and uh, uh, other various aspects to it. It, it's, uh, it just forced you kind of deeper all the time. If you wanted to actually make any progress, you had to sort of really focus in on things like... Uh, yeah, what actually is, for instance, a belief? Not, not, not sort of people. And when people talk about beliefs, they go straight to the content. Yeah, but that's yeah. And what's a good uh, archi architecture of a belief? That's that's more yeah, yeah. philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so there's this whole uh, terminology of intentionality, which is a weird thing to be using for the purpose, but. Uh, it basically means that uh, there are all these mental states that have content, beliefs, desires, hopes, mm -hmm. dreams. You know, you know, we all have this something that they're about. They have aboutness. Mm -hmm. And this, if you look at it on an objective point of view, is exceptionally weird because it, it mm -hmm. refuses to uh, reduce to anything else. Mm. And it's the same also with sensation. Sensation doesn't reduce to neuron firings. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we normally think that it, oh, it's, it's the same thing, but that's not how we experience it at all. Um, mm. you can, uh, and um, so, yeah, the, the core issue in philosophy, right, you is really about um, how you understand you know, mind and uh, and matter. What what you know? Matter is, and we think we know what it is, but we actually don't. <laughs> Even the physicists, I don't, they have a lot some some very nice, you know. Uh, uh, equations and things which produce answers which seem to be correct but that, why those equations work and sort of what's actually you know the equation is supposed to be about is uh, unclear at best mm -hmm. and uh, so direct experience just takes you and the, the more you you you, you, you Think about it the more you predate that it takes you very deep and um, it's hard to make any progress on it uh, I mean people have been I mean you, it's particularly hard if you're trying to be say a materialist yeah no. and uh, you know, as, uh, as Rupert Sheldrake and others have been pointing out that the, the current current philosophy of mind is moving away from that, and that was bound to happen. Yeah. Uh, um, they've been working on that for many decades, most of you know, the twentieth century, basically, and you know, 
into the 21st century is starting to dawn on people that this, this never did work. And yeah. what, 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 what's the implications of that? And I don't think that most people, are, a lot of people think they know what the implications are, but um, do they? <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, what, it, what it is, however, is totally intriguing and fascinating. Um, so, I mean, for me, uh, it's, it's a training in uh, a philosophy. I think you ask about, you know, what, what's the use of it? Um, just philosophy is useful just for life in general. I mean, it's use, use, if you want to be able to think to any purpose, then philosophy is the subject for you. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if, if you want... If you want to understand what the, you know, the most insightful people in the world have thought about, about reality, it's obviously the, the, the subject for you, unless you want to go into theology. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, so um, people who, who say that philosophy is useless uh, have a very strange no notion of usefulness. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, the metaphor that Wilbur and others use about uh, integral theory is a map. So maps are highly useful. And it's true of philosophy. Philosophy can help you find your way around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. not, if you, not if you do your philosophizing in a certain kind of way, though. Uh, if you're <laughs> a, a, a dilettante who just kind of fiddles on the edge of uh, uh, mm. Or if you if you don't uh, really realise that this is actually a difficult subject, it's the easiest subject in the world to get into in a superficial way, and I think one of the most difficult subjects to be really good at. And the people who I consider to be really good have my profoundest respect: the Jürgen Habermases, the Charles Taylors. Uh, there's a, there's a number of uh, of other people, I so said this person uh, exemplifies what a real philosopher is or should be, um, and um, many fall short. Mm. Back to Daniel Dennett's of this world, but for instance. Mm, interesting, yeah. It's it's interesting because somebody once this, uh, described design because you know, I've been in user experience design and and it's a sort of nebulous area you know designing experiences <laughs> uh, it's just sort of nebulous thing but somebody uh, described design at one point as applied philosophy uh, because to design anything you have to first have some sort of philosophy of the world and how something should work and then apply that into real life and then it's like realize like wow that sounds a lot like integral theory put into practice well yeah i mean in, i mean integral theory is is interesting because it doesn't restrict itself to philosophical bits but i think that the psychological bits are incredibly valuable uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have people like um, Keith DeWitt, who uh, uh, is just uh, an absolute gold mine of practical psychological insight. I mean, there's numerous others, but he's, he's one that I've enjoyed immensely in recent times. Uh, the, and the ability to actually tie those things together. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like the philosophy of mind so much, because of course it's also about psychology. And the practicalities of, of that and the ability to actually work with your mind and avoid the traps uh, that people are just fall into all the time and cause themselves all sorts of grief and everyone and other people all sorts of grief. No, when you're... Uh, projecting, for instance, or, or when you've been triggered and actually create a space between you and an automatic response that you might regret. <laughs> we've, we've all been there. We've all done things, oh, God, what, what have I just done, you know? <laughs> uh, whereas you know, knowing in beforehand you know, what, what you're likely to be triggered by and should you be triggered, being able to say, 
take a breath. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just step out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> if you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Keith, uh, I'm, I'm conscious of time. Uh, what is the healthy way forward for integral movement in, in your view? Yeah, okay, that's another difficult one. And I, um, well, uh, we need to, uh, right, let me, we talk about the, uh, the people like our friend David. Uh, Realize that David's uh, and all these people do actually perform a an important service for us. They uh, mm. they kind of force us to be clearer and, and more uh, uh, about sort of what we're really on about because uh, and uh, go deeper basically. But that's that's one thing. Uh, the the movement as a whole has sort of gotten itself a bit admired in various ways. I mean, there's been the various scandals and uh, that have uh, that have happened. Uh, the only way to to go forward is to in a I mean, in, in a sense, we sort of need to double down and, and sort of say we need to be, to be better. Uh, at uh, and, and think harder and and enact and uh, yeah, I find in myself uh, 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 angers, for instance, and, and, and resentments that I say, oh God, I know what this this is. It's the same thing that I'm seeing in other people. And we need to uh, just you know, hold those things in awareness and, and, and learn, learn the wisdom of, of, of just living with the things that, that, that we are um, uh, living through and uh, working through in, you know, the, healthiest ways possible which which may mean just sort of okay i'm neglecting my uh, uh my health in, in in different ways i, I need to actually at seriously attend to things and this i i, I mean I, this is this is just off the top of my head but that essentially what is happening in your world what's what's arising that's that's what you're, you're needing to deal with now. Be yeah. there, yeah. Do it, yeah. Uh, de uh, deal with that, it. Deal with it. <laughs> deal deal with it, uh, and uh, be thankful for the people who come and sort of get in your face, uh, even though we can find them quite obnoxious at times. Yeah, and, it's like uh, somebody cared to actually converse online. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I, I've had another interaction which I've, has, has been enormously fruitful. I mean, oh, I think the guy's seriously on the wrong track, but you know, that's all right. We're... Yeah, you can explore wrong tracks too. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's it's not as if he's alone. You know that the there are all these ideas out there and uh, they get people derailed in, in practice. Uh, I know one very common one is kind of something is just subjective, therefore not to, you know, to be ignored or, or, or downplayed. They don't get it. They don't get the importance of subjectivity and what it actually means. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what what is and this is something I actually did cover in my first chapter is sort of what does it mean to be objective? It's not what people mm. think a lot of the time. Mm. Mm. And um, if people really understood that, it would save so much grief. You, know, you need to take things as an object and have a relationship to them and 
that relationship is your you know, your objectivity. You 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 then you have a, a measure of freedom. You can do something. You you can you instead of just react, you can actually fashion your life and be effective and do great things. Objectivity that way is absolutely important. People have a sort of yeah. glimmer of it, but they don't yeah. they don't necessarily get it. Awesome. Keith, can you please uh, tell the listeners where they can find out more about you and uh, also, you know, just introduce your book a little bit. I think it would be awesome to actually have another conversation just purely about your book uh, in another time, if that, if you would be open to that. Uh, sure. It's, uh, yeah, it's distressingly incomplete at this point. Uh, I have a strong notion of, you know, what's in there or what will be in there. But um, it's uh, where people can find me. That's a tricky one, actually, at the moment. Uh, well, I am on Facebook, uh, and certainly on the Interval Global. Um, and uh, if you do go there, you will find me uh, in debate with certain people in, in, in different ways. <laughs> um, I am on LinkedIn. <laughs> Uh, I'm working for a company called Revelant uh, these days. Um, so um, you can send me a message in either of those places if you wish, and I will respond if you're obviously a, uh, you know, not somebody who, you know what I mean, some you get Yeah, of sane, <laughs> of sane mind. Of sane mind. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what what are your big aspirations in your own life in the next, let's say, one or two years? Yeah, well, uh, having uh, stabilised my uh, work situation, I am wanting to sort of build out, definitely get the book done, and basically have establish a presence where I am saying what I feel I need to say to the world uh, about what, how I understand things and uh, how I think that's helpful to people, would be helpful to people. Uh, but I suppose that, that's the main thing that, that I'm uh, uh, aspiring to do. Fantastic. Well, Keith, listen, thank you so much for, for speaking to me. And I know that there's going to be a whole bunch of people who are going to be very interested in hearing us uh, talk. There's so much to cover, of course, lots of ground. Uh, I really, really respect your, you know, thinking and, uh, you know, everything that you shared with me. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And good luck with the book. You know, when it, it, it'd be amazing to you know, know that you've got two, you know, writing it and completing it and then maybe we can have a conversation about that and, and sort of unpick it a little bit. Excellent. And uh, I appreciate both the fact that you were wanting to speak and uh, the impetus that this uh, may provide. Thank you so much, Keith. All the best. Thank you very much, Jason. Yes, great to talk. Bye. Bye. Bye.